Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl. And most of you don't know I've been in the YouTube space now for close to a decade. It's been quite some time. And when I first started out, I didn't really have any knowledge in video production, in editing. I essentially watched YouTube videos, how to create them. And the gear that I had is obviously nowhere near what we've got in the studio. I didn't have full frame cameras. I didn't have all these fancy lights. I started out with a point and shoot camera and kind of went from there. And in this video, I kind of want to share my top picks or my recommendations for gear for content creators. I know that bracket or that segment is kind of just booming. Everyone wants to create videos. Everyone wants to get into the social media space. So this is really useful if you're kind of just starting out, you've got a bit of extra money to spend or you've been doing it for a year. You started off with that OG point and shoot camera or you're probably most likely your smartphone and are looking to get some better gear to kind of up your game. This is perfect. And I have partnered with my friends over at Best Buy. So all the gear that you see in this vid can be found linked below. You can pick it up there. And honestly, it's my go-to place if I'm looking to upgrade to any new stuff. We will start off first, I think is the most important thing, especially for YouTube, for actually any social media, because it requires you to take photos or say video. This is the Sony a7C. And actually one of my first cameras that I upgraded to from that point shoot was this predecessor, which was the Sony A6000. That's an APS-C size sensor, but Sony has upgraded the game so much in the past decade that they now have a full frame sensor in a small body. And of course it costs the fraction of the price than say the full frame camera that I'm recording on, which is the Sony A7S III. So right now, 100%, I would say this is the best value full frame camera that you can get. And the reason why you'd want to upgrade to a full frame sensor, you get, of course, better depth of field, you can get more light. And if you compare that to a smartphone, which typically has a really small sensor, even point shoots have a one inch sensor. And in layman's terms, the larger sensor size you have, the better the image slash video quality. What makes this camera so good for content creators other than the great video quality is the flip out display. And I will admit, Sony took the longest time to get on board with this little flip out display, but now all their video focused cameras have them. Of course, the A7S III's, which I'm recording on. It kind of just makes front facing recording so much easier. I can see what's happening on the screen and I of course can now begin to vlog. I can kind of do whatever I want. And if I want to flip it around, now I can see what I am recording with right now. You can see both of the cameras cameras that I've got going. It's got a dedicated video button. And honestly, the video quality is so good on this camera, so comparable to the more expensive A7S III's. I'll record all of the B-roll footage of this video with this camera. I'll let you guys know when I do that. That's how good this is. I've been super impressed. And I would say for 99% of you out there, whether you're just taking photos or video or both, the A7C is more than enough. What I've got is overkill, but I am of course a techie. And I know some of the drawbacks people mention online, it only has one SD card slot. Unless you're a pro photographer, you only use one. I use one in both of my cameras now. It doesn't have other dedicated mappable buttons. Okay, I could maybe see that. The viewfinder perhaps isn't as good, but if you can look past those few little things, honestly, the most important thing is the video and photo quality. Like I said, it is just as good. The next thing though, I think a lot of people will talk about is the kit lens. And of course this camera does come with one. So it's the 28 to 60. And once again, those same reviews that you watch will kind of bash on the kit lens for being not that good. In my opinion, if you're starting out or even in the intermediate space, the kit lens is the best value that you can grab. My recommendation always for kit lenses, use them for a year to two. Once you're getting used to the camera, you're getting a bit more competent, then you can spend the extra money on more expensive lenses or glass. Great thing about this and the Sony space, if you grab an extra body, you can always slap this extra lens on as your second. If you are though looking to upgrade to your first piece of glass, outside of the kit lens. This Nifty 50 is one of my favorites and it still doesn't break the bank. So this is Sony's 50 mil 1.8. So it is a prime lens. It costs around 300 bucks Canadian, around 200 US. Once again, for that price, this is probably one of the better portrait lenses that you can pick up with that F 1.8 aperture. You get all of that creamy bokeh in the background. All these shots, which I'm showing right now, were taken with this combo. It's a great little lens for the price and I think it matches perfectly with the A7C's body. It isn't too big, too bulky and keeps the form factor of your setup or your kit still nice and small and compact. Now that you've got your camera and lenses selected, I think 
This is one of the most iconic pieces of camera equipment. This is the Jovi Gorilla Pod, and this little contraption kind of got famous with Casey Neistat. I think I've seen every YouTuber or every content creator at least have one of these in their backpack. It's essentially a mini tripod that can articulate in any which way. You can maneuver the legs into pretty much any orientation that you want. You can wrap this around things. You can place it on the ground. You can place it on a table. You can configure it to be your very own vlogging rig. The newer ones, which they didn't have back in my day, even have these little quick release plates so you can quickly take your camera off the setup if you need to. I don't really think these need any more intro. We've seen them, they're famous, and yeah, if you already don't have one, Now's the time to pick one up. Now that we've got the camera gear sorted, the next most important thing is probably lighting and audio. And I would argue that both of these are just as important as the video quality. So maybe we'll start off with the audio first. This is the Deity Lab Mic. No one will listen to you ramble or watch your video if your audio sucks. So this is a very simple plug and play lab mic. And this is just so much better than the built-in microphone. And this is really useful if you're doing a sit down setup, a tutorial, if you're say maybe even gaming, because you have to plug this in directly into the camera, you'll always have this cable. So as long as you've got this snaking through under your shirt, all you'll see is a little microphone kind of peek up here. Now you can properly record and as you can hear, the audio quality is just so much better because if we switch to me talking without the microphone, you can probably hear that's a huge difference from just having something as simple as this plug in. And once again, you're not breaking the bank, it costs around 40 to 50 bucks just makes the biggest difference with your audio game. Next off for lighting, this is the Aperture MC and I actually swear by Aperture stuff, I've got two Aperture lights right now in the studio. Lighting is super important. You're about to find out if I turn off all the lights in my studio, my vids actually look very, very different. And obviously the large soft boxes, which I have are a tad bit overkill, but if you just start off with something as small as this, I'll actually turn this on and you can see that it gives off quite a significant amount of light for the size. You know, obviously in your setup, you'd have this living off camera or mounted just behind wherever your camera is sitting, but you can see here how much better my face is lit in comparison to if it's off, off and on. And you can see it also has a little LCD screen where you can change two things, both the intensity of the light, so we can get this all the way up to 100%. I'd say it's probably a bit bright. We can knock it down. And you can also change the temperature. So right now it's at 4,600. And if you want something a bit warmer, you can go all the way up to 3,200. So depending on the style of your video, or I guess the look and feel that you want, you can always change the LEDs to kind of match that kind of look that you want. Okay, so now that lighting, audio, and video is all taken care of, the last little pieces are just accessories that I have found really useful in my own content creation. And I know in this video, we're not gonna focus on the computer or where you guys edit. I will give my recommendations. Of course, you can still pick both of these up from Best Buy. So if you are team Mac, I still think the 13 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 chip is a powerhouse. If you are over on PC, I've really been liking and using the Galaxy Book 360 Pro. So once again, that's kind of personal preference. If you are editing, say on Premiere versus either Final Cut or iMovie, I will leave that choice up to you to decide. And moving on, these two little accessories have kind of been awesome as well. I kind of forgot to include this little lens filter in the camera portion. This is the Tiffin Polarizer, and this is essentially a pair of sunglasses for your lens. So if you find yourself shooting a lot outside, it's super sunny, just have a little ND filter. It helps cut down the glare. It's the exact same reason as you'd use a pair of sunglasses. So this kind of fits right over top of your lens. And remember, if you do pick one up, lens sizes do vary, so will the ND filter. So just ensure that they have the proper thread size to kind of match your lens. And next off, we have a portable SSD. And like I said, this camera and most cameras now record in 4K. You've even got some that record in 8K. You need a large enough memory card or hard drive. This one from SanDisk is one terabyte. So typically my workflow, once I'm kind of done recording video on my camera, I'll plug it into that computer of choice. Computers have now just got so good, you only need the one USB-C cable to connect. And usually my little hack for laptop recommendations, get the base storage option because it is pricey to get over a terabyte. You can spend half the price or a third of the price for something portable like this. So work off of this hard drive 
once again, this is one of the pieces which I wish I had 10 years ago. This would probably cost hundreds and hundreds, if not close to $1,000 for something very similar. Just awesome to see tech come down so much in price. And I think this is definitely an essential. And we will wrap off the video with, I think maybe the most important. With my lifestyle, I love to travel around. Having a proper tech bag, I think is an absolute must. So this is the Pro Tactic from Low Pro. This is probably a content creator's, a techie's kind of dream backpack. It has all the things that you would need. Out front, it's made out of ballistic nylon. You've got all these great little attachment spots for carabiners if you wanna hang everything off of it. But more importantly, on the inside, let me flip this around. I will kind of showcase why this is so cool. As you can see, you've got individualized compartments where you can stick your lenses because typically in a normal backpack, you have your lenses that kind of clank around. They're not as secure. This is the perfect solution for carrying lenses around. I know I should put the lens cap on this, but I'm just showing it to you guys. Down in the bottom portion, this is where you typically would stick your camera. And what makes it really cool, once this is kind of zipped up, ready to go, it has these quick little access slots on both sides where you don't have to open the entire pack, but you can still access your camera if you need to. Now, such a handy little pack, kind of perfect for hauling around gear. And yeah, this kind of wraps up my essentials tech guide for content creators, for videographers, for anyone that takes any sort of media, any sort of video, any sort of photo. Hope you guys found this super useful. And remember, all of this stuff is listed down below. You can pick it up at Best Buy. And just remember, if you wanna win one of these items, I'll probably ship it out in that backpack to kind of kickstart your own career or to improve your kick game. Let me know down below in the comments which one of these items was your favorite. Hope you guys enjoyed this. That's the second time I've said that. We'll catch the rest of you in one of my next ones. Peace.